Happy New Year, everyone. Um, it's been a while uh, since I've done another uh, tutorial um, for YouTube. And um, last time I did one, it was talking about uh, the arpeggio shapes I use with uh, Tiny Grimes. Uh, this time, I want to talk about some of the uh, mannerisms of, of Bill Jennings, obviously two of my favorite guitar players. Um, I kind of picked a song to profile. Let me move the video uh, camera down. Um, I'm looking at um, a recording that Bill Jennings did with uh, Shaky Jake. And um, it's called uh, Jake's Blues. And it's a 12 bar and uh, definitely worth, uh, worth you guys checking out. Um, I used to probe uh, Junior Watson on uh, his time with uh, Shaky Jake and how that recording came to be. Uh, if you're unaware that that record um, was, I uh, believe, done for, on Prestige with uh, Jack McDuff and um, and Bill Jennings, and um, asked Junior how uh, how it all kind of came to pass. Um, definitely an odd pairing to be able to produce a record with a, a harmonica player and uh, kind of a more slick organ trio more, uh, based uh, group. Um, but there's a phenomenal solo on there um, in the key of F and it's not too fast and it's 12 bars and it has some of the better ideas that uh, I use in my solos uh, and when I'm thinking about quoting uh, Bill Jennings so in short the solo looks like this it goes Now, what I like about that is I'm utilizing, you know, anything out of the, you know, other than the E or the uh, or the F uh, structure, just uh, for me um, is exciting. Not only uh, because it uses fingerings that weren't conventionally taught when I was first learning how to play guitar, but also because I'm able to uh, get a different tone and to my ear. That sounds more in line with the um, the sound that I hear on those old records. So it starts on the C structure, and it's a pentatonic line. And that's four bars to one right there. And it's got a transition in the four. So you can see how the grips line up. C structure and that simple pentatonic line is something that I hear in, in Jennings is playing now when it goes to the four chord it moves very nicely back in that C structure again Now to transition to the two and the five, I find this kind of clever, is that we're going to be using the third and the root, and that's going to get us down uh, to the uh, the nine or the, the two, which is going to put us in this block position right over here, two, five, one. So. And so it looks like you're bending up to, and it's the flat seven of the two. So I have this two, five, one. So if what I'm practicing these lines, um, I want to know where they start and, and they end and uh, what beat they start on because that, that way I could be able to kind of pull them out of context and be able to pull them into something um, that I would use during my own gigs. 
Uh, playing Jake's Blues is probably not going to happen in my lifetime. Not uh, It's not going to be ops. I'm going to be able to get uh, uh, an organ player and a harmonica player and uh, more so to want to be able to play the song. The song is kind of just a put-together uh, jam with great ideas. So when I get to that one... And so it looks like I'm going to be bending from here. And so if I put this all together and I lay this like on a backing track, um, and I use the iReal Pro for this. pretty close or pretty quiet other thing too that it sounds better I think on the iReal Pro if you use the vibes instead of the piano the piano uh, um, sounds but the vibes just I don't know they sound a little bit more organic since I'm using a, a $20 um, app program here where the drums at least swing so check her out So I made it work. Obviously the two five might have been just a little out. Now I hold this for a bar and it's on the second bar of the one chord um, after the four. So it's on the eighth bar. I'm gonna be doing this. So let me just prove that point one more time. Here we go. memorable um, solo and obviously movable um, um, you know that you'd be able to plug in and kind of a nice moderate tempo and I think you could speed it up and it would sound well too um, now the second chorus of that solo has some nice ideas too and if um, this is something I think anybody can use and I think this is probably you know probably more valuable than the licks I'm showing you but I'm going to play an F7 right here. And on that F7, I'm going to go down to the F major. So I have the 5 and the flat 7. And I'm going to, my destination is going to be the 3 and the 5 of the A structure of the F right here. But I'm going to go down below it and come up. Um, we've heard Billy Butler do this in uh, Quaker City. And. Uh, I can't tell you how many other songs I've seen both Jennings and uh, and uh, Butler do this, um, but it's just an easy idea. You take the 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 seventh chord and you take it below, and you can do that in any structure too. Just for example, if I want to do this thing in F, like use an E structure, you know, there I got the three and the five. If I go up to here, I got the five and the seven. Watch it. It's a nice way to, you know, bide your time. If I was playing a blues, check this out. starting our solo with that and every time I do that it's gonna be a measure and 
Now on that fourth measure, I'm gonna transition into the four chord. Uh, there we go. So now obviously when I have the A structure F, I have the major, so I have the major six, and if I take it down, I have the nine. Um, it's on the fourth bar before we make the transition into the four chord that we want to be able to kind of voice that that dominant. That's going to be the, the hinge. Hitting a flat seven is a, is a guide tone. It's going to pull us into the third of the next, uh, next chord. Um, never thought I would be using such terminology in, uh, um, in my life considering I'm just a guitar or a blues guitar player. But the third and the seven, they connect up. So it works well between going to the one of the four chord and having the same, um, um, you know, interval difference. It works good from going five to the one as well. You hit the seven, it's going to pull you into the third. And just to make it a little bit easier because the, the structure doesn't look um, as conventional, if I hit the flat seven, hit that flat seven, the note below it's the third of the four chord. I could do that from the five, you know, um, as well. So I can hit the five because here's the seven of the five. So if you're looking at uh, getting yourself connected from one chord to the next, that's a nice, uh, nice, um, easy way to do it. So let's kind of keep on. So we, you know. Now this is clever here. We got the B flat, same idea before, major, seven. You know, and I'm gonna be in that structure here. I'm gonna be using. And that's a great four chord. And the way I'm hinging that is to the E structure right here. E structure, B flat being the four up here. Now this is the part we all go nuts for, the stomping with Bill, great big pleasure. And um, this was the one that gives people the most problems. Again, this is gonna be a walk down that happens on the eighth bar. It gets you down to the two. So on the beginning of the eighth bar, you're gonna go. So one. It's like, well, how the hell is that the five chord right there, right? Well, it's the five chord because I have the five and the seven of the C right here. We have one. And we're lucky because if we decide to uh, transcribe and profile stomping with Bill, we're going to find the same, um, you know, same similar, similar quotes. We're going to find uh, notes that, uh, you know, are synonymous between each other. So we go on the five. Now what we're gonna do to get back on the one is you notice that we have the C structure, F right there, and there's a six. And then kind of, you know, bending from the E note just sounds good. That's the same thing. And I think that's just a nice, nice sound, and it's something that I can identify with uh, with Bill, the the both Bills, Billy Butler and Bill Jennings. So I'm gonna play the second chorus solo for us real quick. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, again, it's it's a I think it's a very nice tasty solo, and it has enough bite size uh, pieces that I think um, 
you know, you got to be able to kind of, you know, dissect, you know, take these little modules and uh, be able to apply them into your own playing. Being able to mix, like I said, a big premise of my playing is being able to quote different players uh, over a rhythm, over a backdrop, um, where um, a lot of players can work. Because we're lucky, you know, for a lot of jump blues, there's a specific tempo and there's a specific um, rhythm. There's a range, and uh, we can find licks that seem to kind of fit very nicely uh, in the changes. And, um, you know, and being jump blues, we can be able to find uh, like sounding players and be able to kind of gorilla glue them, so to speak, as my uh, one of my students in Holland uh, has told me. And so anyway, food for thought. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, again, check out the solo. It is on uh, or the full record. Um, I'm trying to remember the exact name of it. You could search it out. But it's Bill Jennings with Shaky Jake. Um, it's a good listen all the way around and uh, more stuff. So um, I believe it's called Good Times. And uh, that's it, guys. Take care and have a fantastic year.